Well, with Victoria recording a shocking 41 deaths overnight, many commentators are weighing the pros and cons of herd immunity and asking whether we should have gone down that path. Sweden took an unpopular approach and didn't instigate a lockdown, which has divided opinion. Sebastian Rushworth is a doctor in the emergency room of one of the big hospitals in Stockholm, Sweden. Sebastian wrote an article about Sweden's experience and Sebastian is here to talk to us about it today. Welcome, Sebastian, to the Ben Robin Robbo Show. Thank you very much. Sebastian, we know Sweden took a much more relaxed approach than many other countries, Australia included. What kind of measures, if any, were put in place? Um, so I think the big difference is that uh, the measures taken by Sweden were pretty much entirely voluntary. So there was a, a recommendation that uh, uh, in particular people over the age of 70 stay home as much as possible, avoid social contacts as much as possible. And uh, apart from that, people were recommended to stay home if they're sick to um, But there wasn't a lockdown like pub. we've experienced in Australia where people have been forced to stay indoors and, and mm -hmm. isolate. No, there hasn't been any force involved. It's all been entirely voluntary. Um, I'm really interested about the herd immunity part of this. So um, the whole reason Sweden's taken this approach is the idea of getting herd immunity. Do you believe that is happening? Because the articles that I'm reading suggest that that hasn't materialised. I think in Sweden, we're all pretty sure that we have developed herd immunity. And uh, I think there, there is probably a, a media agenda outside Sweden to, uh, to claim that we haven't developed herd immunity. Um, what I'm, what but... I'm talking about is not actually, um, uh, it's medical journals. So um, there are professors in, in the UK, so not within Sweden, because I, I do get the feeling Sweden is very much on board. Uh, as an outsider looking in, it seems the people of Sweden are on board with the approach your government has taken. But um, professionals outside of Sweden are saying we don't want to take that approach over in the UK because it hasn't worked, it hasn't materialised. I think the people who are saying that we don't have herd immunity in Sweden are looking at one thing. They're looking at the rate of the population that has antibodies, mm -hmm. which is still maybe 20% or something like that. And obviously 20% of a population having immunity isn't going to be enough to have herd immunity. And, uh, but if you actually look at what's happening in Sweden, the infection rate has crashed. Uh, in, in the hospital where I work, I haven't seen a single case of COVID in the emergency room in over six weeks. And uh, right. at the moment, there isn't a single person being treated for COVID in the hospital where I work, in spite of the fact that there is uh, no no lockdown, in, sp in spite of the fact that everyone is living normally. And, uh, and there are also studies coming out now that show that many people who become infected with COVID don't develop antibodies, but they do develop T cells, T cells specific for COVID, and they, they also seem to develop a functioning immunity. So, so my argument to that would be, yes, only a minority has antibodies, but I think a much larger proportion of the population has T cells, and that that is what is allowing us to now have herd immunity. This is a very quick two-part question to you. How many people are you aware of that has died in in Sweden? Like how many people? So the official statistic is uh, now about 5,800, I think, almost 6,000. Okay. That's a lot of people. But how does a government like Sweden justify to its citizens? I don't know how they're coping with this, but you know, how do they justify to their citizens that a bunch of them are going to die in order for them to generate herd immunity for the greater good? I mean, that must be mm. a really bitter pill for them to swallow, right? So um, I really, I mean, I'm not representative of the Swedish government, so I can't answer for exactly how they were reasoning, but I really doubt that was uh, uh, how they were thinking about it. I but do think, you then uh, justify, because let's just move away from the government there with that question, mm -hmm. you know, you as a doctor and with the knowledge and the know-how that you have, how do you then justify that, that a, a large part of the population 
would need to die and be put at risk in order to generate herd immunity? Well, I mean, first of all, 6,000 isn't a large part of the population. In Sweden, we have uh, around 90,000 deaths a year from from other causes, and, and we have 10 million citizens. You really need you need to put the. I mean, 6,000 sounds big when you just say 6,000, but you need to put it in a in a overall perspective. And um, so. I think what the Swedish government did differently from other governments is to weigh the consequences of uh, lockdown against the consequences of not locking down, because lockdown is not a death-free option. No. I, I mean, uh, the fear-mongering that's gone, gone along with lockdown has probably resulted in, uh, in quite a few deaths. We've seen... Uh, ED volumes, I mean, emergency room volumes around the world have dropped in a, in a lot of countries by 50% because people are afraid to go to the emergency room. And I think it's probably the case that a lot of people have had heart attacks or strokes or other potentially fatal diseases, but they've been so afraid to go to the emergency room to be treated that they've ended up dying of those other diseases at home. So, I mean, I think it's quite possible that lockdowns killed more people than COVID has. We're going to need to do an accounting when this is over and see, see what the overall effect of lockdown is. And that's, that's just looking at deaths. You also need to consider all the other negative effects. What are the negative effects of keeping children out of school for six months or a year? Uh, uh, what, what are the negative effects of making a large part of the population unemployed? We know that when people are unemployed, they they drink more, they're more likely to commit suicide. So mm. I think... But those statistics Sweden aren't necessarily right. I mean, allegedly in Australia, the statistics on people uh, with mental health issues taking their life, I mean, the statistics on that is that it's lower at this point of the year than last year. Hmm. Yeah, so like I say, I mean, we, we're we going to need to look at the end of this, what the total picture is. I just think you can't say that not locking down uh, uh, has negative consequences without also considering what are the negative consequences of lockdown and you need to look at the whole picture and weigh both the negative effects of one and the negative effects of the other and i think i think you know i think the reason we had this severe global lockdown is because this started in china and uh, China did a very severe lockdown, and uh, then we saw that the disease was spreading very rapidly around the world. And I think governments saw that, and they panicked, and they saw that what China was doing uh, seemed to be working, and they, they went with the same option. And uh, I think it's very possible that if this pandemic had started in a Western democracy, that that uh, the way global governments would have reacted could have been quite different. I, I think yeah, I think you speak a lot of sense there. I think that's a very good point that you bring out there, Sebastian. We're going to move on really quickly, but I wanted to ask you, there is kind of a underlying argument that's starting to really gather strength here in Australia, and that is how many times can we lock down, re-lock down, lock down, re-lock down, uh, to, look, to the point where we've just got to understand that COVID is going to be with us. Uh, we don't know about a vaccine. Uh, like you said, we can't measure the deaths of, you know, suicide or, uh, you know, domestic violence and extra drinking. Do you think, looking at a model such as Australia, that we need to start getting to the point where we just have to open up and we just have to live with what happens here the same way that Sweden has done that uh, it, with you? Well... I mean, I wouldn't presume to tell Australia how to run. But we want to know country, your. But... but we want to know your opinion, though. Your opinion from you as a doctor and, and from where you're coming from. What do you think about that? Because it is certainly gathering strength. Uh, uh, strength. That kind of argument that we just can't keep locking people down. I think the only situation where lockdown really makes sense is if you're willing to stay in lockdown until there is an effective vaccine, because. Yeah, right. If you're not willing to stay in lockdown that long, which could be another year, it might be another several years. Uh, mm -hmm. If you're not willing to stay in lockdown that long, then lockdown doesn't really make any sense because the moment you open up, there's going to be an explosion of cases and you're going to end up 
going through what Sweden has already gone through and you're going to end mm -hmm. up developing herd immunity before a vaccine arrives. So, sure. I, I mean, that's the thing people need to decide. Are we willing to stay in lockdown for another year or potentially another couple of years? And if not, then maybe we should be going for the herd immunity approach instead. It's really interesting what you say about that, because this is the defining moment about the future of lockdown, because we're seeing new cases pop up all over the place. Some new cases just in Queensland here where we are, where I am. Um, I'm the, the problem you face with this thought in this country is the idea that we got it wrong because Australia has been all about the lockdown. Um, and we feel in some states protected. We have locked down states within our country from other states where in Victoria, the, the, um, the coronavirus has gotten a little bit out of control, but it is coming back down now with stage four restrictions. So is it a political football here now about the idea of herd immunity versus lockdown? Because as you say, a lockdown only works if you're prepared to go the long, dis the long haul. I think that it could be the case. I think for politicians to back down uh, and say, you know, maybe Sweden did the right thing and maybe we should, that's what we should do instead. I, mean, I really don't <laughs> it's a see big that call. happening. But, but there is also the fact that the US really has, have a, has had a half-hearted lockdown um, that, you know, their, their citizens are completely ignoring it, but they've had... Uh, Hundred, what is it, 180,000 deaths now? So herd immunity certainly hasn't happened there. So, I mean, the US isn't really, uh, for any practical purpose, one country. It's, uh, yeah. I, I, it has 330 million people. Mm. Each state is really its own country if you compare with, with uh, how it works in the rest of the world. And the uh, so I know in the US people have been talking about multiple waves, like they're saying there's been the first wave and then there's been a second wave. And yeah. I really, I don't think that's the case. I think there's just one wave that's been hitting different parts of the US at different time points. Right. And I think probably parts of the US, like I think probably New York has developed herd immunity at this point. They have a curve that looks very similar to the curve we have here in Stockholm. And there are other parts of the US that haven't, uh, that haven't really experienced COVID yet and that are still in the worst of it. One and, final uh, question here, sorry, because we we really, and I, I don't mean to just be throwing curveballs at you, but this is really important to us in Australia because we want to see a way forward. But I've pulled up an article where it makes the point that um, Sweden has a higher percentage of the country's population um, getting COVID-19 than Nordic nations such as Norway, which has only had 264 deaths, despite the population only being half of that of Sweden's. So is, is it a point that because of the lack of lockdown that Sweden has significantly had an increased rate of mortality because of COVID-19? I think that is definitely the case. Uh, I, I mean, Norway, Denmark, Finland, they all went into serious lockdown and they've managed to contain the spread and they each only have a couple of hundred deaths. Sweden has a couple of thousand deaths. So I think that is definitely the case that in the short term perspective, if you're only looking at the number of deaths over a few months, they've done a much better job. But like I, I said, lockdown only makes sense if you're willing to go the long haul and wait mm -hmm. until there's an effective vaccine. because the moment those countries leave lockdown, they're going to see an explosion of cases and they're going to end up with the same death numbers that Sweden's already existed. But you know what's Sweden's interesting? Already I, experienced. I feel like over this chat, you know, we've, we've been able to establish that, you know, you have the best interest of the human race. Like, you know, you're not saying this because you're a bad person or a good person. You're just saying your facts and your truth. That's what you're doing. You're speaking your truth. But would you hang your hat on that? Would you tell a whole country like Australia and me being in Melbourne, Victoria, where we're in stage four lockdown, that we've made a mistake? Are you saying that you would hang your hat and tell an entire other country that herd immunity is the way forward? 
like I'm saying, I don't want to tell other countries what to do, what's wrong or right. I mean, you. But isn't to... it then dangerous to be able to write an article? I mean, I'm. I think you're a fabulous guy. I, you know, from this chat, I can tell that you have great empathy and that you have facts and you're speaking your own truth. But that's very. It's a really dangerous thing to uh, put your name on the bottom of, unless you truly believe this is the way forward. So. I really just uh, Sweden was getting a lot of criticism for its handling of COVID and I really just wanted to share my perspective on what Sweden did and how that turned out and I think I think that is valuable information for other countries in in deciding whether they should be relaxing lockdown or if they want to continue with lockdown for another one plus years mm. i think i'm just providing the information as i see it on on what happened with the swedish experiment and then and then each country can take that information going forward and decide uh, uh, what you want to do well yeah. sebastian you have fascinating insight and to see more of sebastian's article and to read this article which is a really good read head to sebastianrushworth.com Thank you for joining us today. It's been fascinating to talk to you. Thank you, Sebastian. Thank you very much. It's the Ben, Rob and Rob, oh, Ben, Rob and Rob, oh, Shen, Rob and Rob, oh.